Hello, so today I'm going to be talking about my portfolio for art school. I applied for sculpture courses in art schools in the UK. I applied to five art schools in total, but the two that I was really, really interested in was Edinburgh College of Art and Glasgow School of Art. Glasgow School of Art was my first choice. I'm making this video because when I was applying last year, around October time when the UKS applications opened, I was searching YouTube for portfolio videos and looking for like people that had applied to the same art skills as me and had went through the same experience and I wanted to see maybe what their standards were but unfortunately I couldn't actually find any um, it was really really difficult to find something on Glasgow School of Art or Edinburgh College of Art um, application process so, so I thought I would make a video to try and put that out there so people applying to any art schools in the UK have a bit more of a insight into what people are applying with. So I got accepted into both Glasgow and Edinburgh. Um, in Glasgow I got accepted into third year sculpture and environmental art and in Edinburgh I got accepted into second year sculpture. So I started working on my portfolio around July uh, time in 2017 so I thought I had made up my mind that I wanted to go to art school um, so I thought I better start thinking about, it was more of a panic, <laughs> um, me and a few friends who had decided to go to apply to big art schools, not really thinking that we'd really get in but thinking we're going to really like work our butts off and try and get in. Uh, yes, yeah, so we started thinking about that in July and it then just spiralled and it got really really serious and we started like really really trying to think about work that we wanted to produce and things that we might want to produce for the rest of our lives. Um, I applied for an evening class at Glasgow School of Art because obviously that was my first choice um, which was like a portfolio preparation class and um, so I got onto that and it was more tailored for first years. It was good to see how they worked and um, how the tutors worked and an insight into what they wanted to see or maybe what they didn't want to see. Um, so that started in about September time, October time. So from there I just started making loads of experimental work. I was looking at work that I'd made over the last year in college. I was in my second year in my HND at the time. So I was trying to make every piece of work that I was making in college count and make it to the best of my ability so that I could use that for my portfolio. This time I was also researching the art schools that I wanted to go to and the types of people that went there, the type of art that was coming out of it, um, famous graduates, just loads of things that were interested in would help me make my mind up. So in the UK, well at least my experience, the process for applying to art schools is through UCAS to begin with. So you do like the common application through UCAS which is like all your details, your personal statement and I think you get like five choices and um, you need to pay but you get you can get up to five choices of where you want to go and um, and that sends the same application off to all five art schools um, and then once they look at your work and stuff and accept your application you then get invited to submit an e-folio so for Edinburgh once you'd sm submitted your e-folio, that was it, they chose from there and then you were accepted or you were declined. For Glasgow School of Art, it was like a your e-folio and then an essay about what you wanted to do there. And then once, if you got accepted with that, you were then invited to interview. You had to make a physical folio, so you were bringing work along. Obviously I applied for sculpture, so I wasn't bringing my, I wasn't bringing my actual finished pieces along, I was just bringing maquettes, um, photographs. Um, I made an A1 folio, so if you guys would like to see that, I can make a video on my physical folio as well. But today I'm just be talking about my e-folio, which consists of 25 slides um, of like pictures of your work. Uh, so yeah, let's get on to that. My first slide was a piece called Compassion, which is a latex blanket. The sculpture was inspired by the rape clause, um, so it was a political piece. Um, a lot of my work is like inspired by the media. And personal experience. For my first slide in my e-folio I wanted like a wall image so something that was going to get remembered, something that was going to intrigue them and they want to know more. So this piece was hung in an alleyway um, and <laughs> the photograph I got from it was really really good, it was really intriguing, it was really like, um, I mean you can see for yourself it's quite like spooky and eerie and 
uncomfortable. I put this as my first slide so that it was to draw them in and want to know more. Um, so slides 1 to 3 are the same piece. The second slide is more detailed pictures of the piece and also another location where I'd hung it. So when, when I was researching GSA and going to the open days, I had a feeling that the context was important to them and actually putting your work out there in the environment was really important. Um, so this piece I had actually linked it to an incident that happened in Stirling where there was sexual assault in two places in the one night. So I took my piece there and I photographed it and I got people's reactions to it and um, things like that. I included those photos um, so they would want to know more and want to know why they're in those places, which is something they would ask at an interview. So the third slide for that was just development work, showing them about my sketchbook showing them about experimentation and how I got there. My fourth slide was from a performance called Desire. Um, it was just, it linked in with the latex from the last piece because I'd used two condoms and it was to do with kind of gender and expectations and stuff. Slides five, six and seven were a piece that I had also made in my first year called Bottled It and it was a sculpture that was inspired by Donald Trump when he signed the anti-abortion executive order. Um, and that was something that really hit hard for me and I was really had a, a strong opinion on and I wanted to kind of get that feeling out. It was a really strong piece for my portfolio because it was something that I made with so much emotion. The materials came from my research into back alley abortions and how they use things like coat hangers and wire. In the end I ended up crocheting wire, red wire, um, into small wombs and I put them inside industrial jars to show like the representation of how many women got abortions it was, an, it was an industrial product, it was something that is reproduced again and again and again and it was to show how many women would be affected by this there was three jars which was um, taken from a statistic that one in three women have an abortion in their lifetime so a lot of my work has like significance and each and every single bit, like there's little bits of detail everywhere. I showed like a bit of sketchbook work for that as well. So this was a piece, I loved the bones of you. It was a woodcut print um, and alongside that was some experimentation on how I got there. Slides 9 and 10, those were those were video stills. Um, I'd created this video at the very beginning of my course where I started to think about concept and I started thinking about how I could, how to put a feeling into a piece of artwork. So at this I looked at colour psychology and this was a live brief. Um, it was a projection that was on at Four Valley Royal Hospital in Stirling, no, in Larbert. And basically the brief was just make a video on something that makes you happy. So I wanted to dive a bit further into happiness and feelings and why something made you happy or you know what I mean like creating that for this piece I used a video of my horse at the time and I thought about when I was filming was how I was feeling and how I connected to this type of animal or this animal and when I was looking into color psychology I was really going for like reds and pinks and I felt that I felt like they must have been important to this so in the end I created a colour swatches which were the feelings that I was feeling which were confidence, love and compassion. The kaleidoscope effect on the video created like the imp impression that you were immersed, like it was taken over, you were you were dizzy, you were it was just all these those feelings of love and compassion and yeah. Slide eleven was again two D stuff to show variety in my work. So it's leading on from the last slide, so it was three um, experimentation things that I'd done in my evening class so it was it was drawn from life it was a skull that I'd brought into class so I'd done like an ink drawing um, bleach ink and bleach and just like a paint in it was experimental slides 12 and 13 were my life drawing now some schools want you to include life drawing it's in the description that you must you know show that you can draw from life and show that you can draw the human form or whatever. Life drawing wasn't compulsory for GSA um, or Edinburgh I don't think but it's something that I'm really passionate about and it's something that I maybe don't do in my like practice but it's something that I like to do for pleasure and I feel that it really, I feel that it really improves not only my drawing skills but actually 
how I'm thinking about things and how I'm creating and just kind of, yeah, just, I don't know, it was just something really personal and something that I really wanted to to kind of include in my portfolio. In particular, one of these um, photos show scale, so I created this really large life drawing. It wasn't my best life drawing, but I had taken a photo of a woman standing next to it to show scale. Um, that's another thing that I picked up at an open day. So slide 14 is again more video stills. This piece was inspired by mental health and panic attacks. It was a really quick experimental piece that I'd done at home and I just felt like I wanted to include it to show that the kind of themes that I was looking at and it also leads on to my next project which is slides 15 and 16. The sculpture is called Us Eyes. It was inspired by mental health and how it's not just uh, like it's perceived as like a kind of also a mental condition. It's it's not something that's physical, but actually it's to do with the chemicals inside the brain. So I was looking at like the chemical makeup of the brain, um, and I was also looking into like self harm. Uh, so that's how I got my material choice. So elastic bands are something that sometimes people use to recover from self harm. Um, so I created a an elastic band brain <laughs> essentially it's just um it's made from it's completely made from elastic bands on slide 16 it uh, shows the actual presentation of the brain it's meant to represent how they preserve vital organs in your body after you die obviously for medical research uh, it was kind of like a like a contradiction so it was about how people take like problems with the heart and your vital organs really really seriously but when it comes to the brain it's it's just treated differently. Also the name was Eyes is actually the goddess of anxiety and depression so I felt that was quite um, fitting. <laughs> so slides 17 and 18 those were again experimental pieces that I made in my evening class. The first slide is homemade condoms so I casted the inside of a condom and then made my own condoms from latex which slide on to a kind of performance piece with wax um, and again it was there was there wasn't much concept it was it was again linked to the desire piece it was just about male and female expectations and stuff like that um, but it was just a it's not a resolved work it's experimentation and I think they quite like to see that in your portfolio as well to show that not everything you're doing is already resolved and you're not always at the end of somewhere you're you're still kind of fumbling through and seeing what you could do and what takes your interest and just experimentation. Uh, slide 19 was is a sculpture called On the Shelf which is my very first sculpture, that, well installation slash sculpture um, that I ever made in college and it was quite angsty and feministy and I thought it was just perfect to put in my portfolio. It was something that it's not got a crazy concept behind it, it is what it is, it's pretty obvious but it's an interesting subject and it shows that it's an interest that I have um, and I think that they would have got that from that quite easily. Slide 20 was again to show variation so I was part of a collaborative piece that I created a public art piece which was in show at the Helix Fire and Light show. Um, so it was a mushroom made from willow and latex and like tracing paper and stuff. So there was a picture of the piece in situ and also pictures of me um, making the piece as well. Slides 20 and 21 were an audience participation piece so again it was to show variety that I'm not just a one trick pony, <laughs> um, that I've dabbled in loads of things and it, it did have a concept so it was to do with um, adolescence uh, and I had looked at the metamorphosis process and how a caterpillar goes into a butterfly. Um, so that was to do with people... So basically the piece was, you were to make an origami butterfly with little to no, no instruction. So I'd left squares of paper out um, and a place for you to hang the butterfly. Um, and there was maybe like, my butterfly put up. Um, it was in Stirling Castle on show and a lot of people had crazy butterflies. Um, and they had crazy butterflies and also some people had made like different things like hats and stuff like that and boats <laughs> like or just different origami things and I think that to me was more interesting because it was how people have grew up it's about individuality it's about how people are breaking the rules and they're not following how it's set out and um, slide 22 showed like some of the 
the things that people put someone wrote on the back of theirs saying I tried so it was do you know what I mean it was kind of like I wanted to show that it wasn't about what the final result looked like it was about collecting information through artwork so slides 23 to 25 were my final piece of artwork that was shown um, this is one of my favourite pieces, it's something that I'm most proud of and it's something that I really thought I wanted to continue with, like this sort of style, um, this sort of aesthetic. I felt like this piece was going to be something that they would remember, so it's a sculpture called Inexorable. It was inspired by the anti-homeless spike, so it was something really personal to me as I have experienced homelessness myself and I've been through the system. Um, but it was more to do with rough sleepers and people's homes being taken away from them. Slide 24 shows that this piece was thought about being site specific but ended up being a gallery piece um, but I did take the piece out into context and I photographed it there. This place that I had taken it was a site where loads of homes were destroyed and people were put into the homeless system or like basically just uprooted and moved for their homes just because this area had a bad reputation. This piece has really helped me gain loads of confidence in the, in the art world um, it's been exhibited a couple of times. Most recently it was accepted into the RSA and sold, which was fantastic but also heart destroying because it was my favourite piece of art that I've ever made so far. But luckily I still have really good photographs of it and I'm sure someone else is enjoying it a lot. Um, it was actually taken over to America, so that was a bit crazy. <laughs> um, the last slide was experimentation from the piece um, and how I was experimenting with like creating a really fearful environment and working with rust um, and also the image that actually inspired the whole piece and I felt this I felt this triptych of photographs was really impactful and I felt like it would really leave a dent in the person who was looking at its mind and like I feel like it would have hit home a wee bit and just made them kind of think about the subject of homelessness and people being uprooted from their homes so yeah I feel like your last slide's really important I did toy with having like the um, slide 23 I toyed with having that as my last slide because I felt it was a really like professional looking photo and it really showed the piece really well but actually the final piece that I shows showed context it showed where it was coming from and it, it was really impactful images um, so yeah, that's that's my portfolio. Um, not all the art schools were 25 slides, this was GSA. GSA's eFolio had the most of my artwork in it, so other art schools that I applied for, I maybe took a few slides out or just chose impactful images from those. If you have any questions, just comment below and I'll try and answer them. Um, just because it's getting to that time and it's where people are really wanting this information. So I felt like it would be really useful because it was what I was looking for last year. Let me know in the comments below what your favourite piece in my portfolio was and what art skills you're applying to. Two tips that I have is create more work than you think you're going to need and uh, give yourself at least six months to prepare loads and loads of work and start working on putting it all together. Photograph everything you do because even like work in progress or you doing something, you like splat and paint at wall or a tissue that you use to wipe the paint up, like they work in your portfolio and it's really really interesting and big art schools want to see those types of things, they want to see that you've got an eye for art, they want to see that you've got an, like an eye for aesthetic and you know what I mean, like sometimes like people put photographs of like, so, like a photo they've taken out in the world <laughs> um, and it's like unrelated to all their work but aesthetically it works um, and that's important. It's how your slides are laid out. They're important. Thanks for watching. I hope I give you a nice insight into what art schools maybe expect or what people who have been accepted have submitted. Um, don't forget to comment below, like and subscribe and share the video with people who you think it may help. Thank you. See ya.